What's up my people? Welcome back to the channel. Leave a like on this video and also subscribe to the channel if you're not already a subscriber. And after you subscribe, click that top bell icon to get notified when there's anything new on the channel. And if you can't see the like button, click the X on your right hand side and you're going to get the option for like the video. So we can move into the first thing people. So I look up update on Philip Paulwell, daughter and her mom, right? Because the police them say them find two bodies and it's believed to be both persons. You see me? But I don't see no update yet. So I'm gonna just share this with you guys and as soon as there's an update, I share it with you. Right? Police at crime scene in Rock 14 probe of Paulwell's missing baby and her mom. The police are now processing a crime scene they believe is linked to the disappearance of opposition member of parliament Philip Paulwell's 10 month old daughter and her mother, law enforcement says. Investigators are at a location in the Rockford community of Eastern Kingston. Senior police officials have declined to comment on the latest development, which comes almost a month since Saraya Paulwell and her mother. Tashina Pattison, 27, were reportedly abducted from their St. Andrew home on September 9. We have a crime scene and we believe that the bodies were taken there and disposed of. It is possible too that they were killed at the location, said a member of the security forces who was not authorized to comment. We are processing the scene. We don't know what we will come up with. Early today, Deputy Commissioner of Police DCP Fitzbailey disclosed four persons have been arrested in relation to the case and that the matter has morphed into a complex case of kidnapping and conspiracy to MURDER. According to him, the evidence collected so far is strong and the investigation is far advanced. He said that the four persons are to undergo a series of administrative procedures before formal charges are considered. DCP named 34 year old petty officer in the United States Navy Leoda Bradshaw who shares a child with Paulwell among persons in custody. Attorney at law Deborah Martin who is representing Bradshaw said her client has provided a statement on her cell phone to the police. Bradshaw issued a statement on September 10th in which she said I wish to state categorically that I have absolutely nothing to do with the disappearance of Mr. Sheena Pattison and her baby girl. Paulwell is a member of parliament for Kingston Eastern and Port Royal and leader of the opposition business in the House of Representatives. This is scary and comes at a time when I have been threatened by scammers who have hacked my phone and banking data and are demanding money to release them, he said in a statement on September 9. So that I when him daughter and her mother was just reported missing. You see me I say? So guys, make sure you subscribe so we can keep you guys updated when there is anything new. And also give this video a thumbs up. See? Give this video a thumbs up. Please and thanks. If you can't see the option for get a thumbs up, click on the X, it will go up on your right hand side and you're gonna get the option there. You see me? So the lady with the whistleblower, right? The lady will come out and, you know what I mean, expose the other vendor at Crab Circle, you know what I mean? Otherwise known as Hero Circle. Or you would say Hero Circle, otherwise known as Crab Circle. Seeing, she said them are threatening her, people are threatening her. You understand? Me kind of overstand say, she mess up a lot of people livelihood. But uh, for the right reason, she did what she did. You understand? People are saying she bad mind and this and that. Well, me no care if she bad mind. This is one bad mind person we me thankful for. You see me? I say if she do it, she mash up the woman business. Me not have no problem with that because what she do, she should not do in the first place. How can you do at a stall I sell something where people are going to eat? And yeah, pass feces right at the same spot. 
No nah, man, you know how much people miss you put out videos say them buy from her? She had the most popular person there, you know. Enough people buy from her, you know. I just see a video where a woman has say she go to the Obia man and the Obia man tell her say she have to dump in at the shop and she will get customers. You know what I mean? So maybe the Obia man tell her if you do that. So here we go and me read a little piece of this, my people. Kingston Mayor says death threats against scrap vendor taken very seriously. You see me? So Mother like them for step in, you know what I mean? The mayor, the police, the relevant authorities. I make sure say this woman is safe, you know what I mean? As much as them possible can. Because them can't be everywhere with her. And people out there for stand with that woman yeah, because of the right thing she do. Look with look on the nastiness where this woman I do. And it look like she's she alone because she just a freely do it. So other people are do it when she alone. You understand? Me see somebody give her a hundred grand. People who don't donate to her if you don't can. You know what I mean? Award her. Make people know, say, yo, certain things not for well done. You see me I say, my people? So me not go go into the article. You see it? Me just go skip and move to the next thing. See? Contract K-I-L-L-E-R gets life in prison for 2013 murder. A Manchester Igla Shivano Richards, who while under probe for the 2015 slaying of two brothers in that parish, was found to be the trigger man in the 2013 contract K-I-L-L-I-N-G of British citizen Artwell Alfonso Joseph, was on Friday sentenced to life behind bars for the 2013 homicide. The 48 year old Joseph, who had retired to Jamaica from Britain with his wife, was SHOT during an home invasion in September 2013 by Richard and another assailant who is reportedly still on the run. Supreme Court Judge Justice Chris Henry Mackenzie, in sentencing Richard to life behind bars with eligibility for parole after 34 years and 7 months on Friday said the M-U-R-D-E-R at the hallmarks of a contract K-I-L-L-I-N-G and was aching in her view to capital M-U-R-D-E-R. Capital M-U-R-D-E-R includes murder for hire M-U-R-D-E-R in the course of certain felonies, burglary, robbery, arson, S-E-X-U-A-L offenses, M-U-R-D-E-R, of a member of a specific class of person acting in the course of their duties, security forces, correctional officers, judicial officer, a person carrying out constabulary functions, witnesses, juror, or justice of the peace, and multiple M-U-R-D-E-R-S. Capital punishment remain on the books in Jamaica but may only apply in certain aggravated M-U-R-D-E-R convictions. There have been no executions since 1988. However, so people, them still can dash for people in a Jamaica, you know. You see me? Instead of you just give them life sentence, you know. But they not do it from so long. Them I forget a real reason for do it like a real gruesome dash way. Them did a think about it for the youth. Remnium Russian, yeah, up a cocoa piece where they dash way in family them, five of them. You see me? Them did a think about it for him. But it look like say because him just admit to everything, them nobody push that. You understand? So, them still can dash with people, but them not really are going to do it for a man with dash with two man or three man. Or, you know what I mean? Them are going to do it when it's real gruesome. And maybe even when a somebody in a high power, somebody dash with. You know what I mean? So, maybe that them are reserved it for. Justice Henry Mackenzie, in assessing the case, said she had identified as aggravating factors the nature and seriousness of the offence, the devastating impact on the family, the fact that the MURDER was committed during a home invasion and was carried out with a machine 
and an accomplice further aggravating factors she said were the forced entry the fact that the deceased did not know richards the evidence pointing to it being a contra k-i-l-l-i-n-g premeditation and the fact that richard spat on joseph after the s-h-o-t after e s-h-o-t and k-i-l-l m m-u-r-d-e-r by any stretch of the imagination is a very serious offense a life has been lost a life has been cut short the impact has been devastating the family of mr joseph will never be able to enjoy his company ever again she said noting that the m-u-r-d-e-r crimes have escalated in mandeville in recent times and permeate the island this case involves a home invasion and from all indication, the home was forcibly entered. Your home is your sanctuary. It should be a safe space. He was not invited but forced his way there and committed the heinous crime. This deceased did nothing to deserve this. There is no proof of any history between them. This crime has all the hallmarks of a contra K-I-L-L-I-N-G and, in my view, could have been capital M-U-R-D-E-R. The judge declared adding that this egregious feature took the case to another level. Stating that all these aggravating factors far outweigh the mitigating factors, the judge, from a starting point of 32 years, given the aggravating factors, added 15 years, taking the total to 47 years, from which she deducted 4 years for the mitigating factors and 8 years and 5 months for time already served by Richards leaving 34 years and 7 months. So the sentence of the court is that the accused serve life imprisonment and that the accused is not eligible for parole until having served 34 years and 7 months behind bars. She stated, Joseph's wife who gave evidence during the trial was effusive in her praise for the judge and the prosecution. I rate the judge every aspect of what happened that night she covered, she detailed and she fairly mentioned the two favorable social statements. I never gave up, I was determined to make that wrong right, she told our news team after the sentencing. The Crown in outlining the allegations said fortuitously during the investigation into the shooting deaths of two brothers Owen Levy, 21 and 27 year old Anthony Bailey off highway drive greenville in may 2015 an acquaintance upon learning that richard had been taken into custody for those m-u-r-d-e-r-s told the police about his boss that he had been the one who k-i-l-l joseph richard reportedly bragged that he got money to k-i-l-l a man in manchester and even took the individual to the house where joseph and his wife had lived the now 33-year-old Richard, who spent his formative years in St. Catherine before relocating to Clarendon and then Manchester, was convicted for the slain in May this year after a jury trial. Richard is scheduled to also stand trial for the K-I-L-L-I-N-G of the two brothers at a later date, our news team was told. So no see me people, so you know really have to do nobody nothing to get that show, you know. You understand? You can't just in a little argument with a person. And them no we can do it to you know. Them can pay somebody else to do it because just so the system set nowadays. So nobody feels it just because you know mix up and you know inner this and you know inner that them thing you can reach you. You see me? So people just stay pray up here, man, and stay out of the way. That's all me can say. So we are gonna move on, my people. Man K I L L in St. Catherine Barbershop. An unidentified man was SHOT and KILL inside a barber shop in Bendan District, St. Catherine, on Thursday. A team of police investigators from the St. Catherine North Division are currently at the MURDER scene. It is reported that about 3 p.m., explosions were heard coming from the shop in an area commonly called Tamarind Tree. The man was later found suffering from what appeared to be multiple GU and SHOT wounds more details soon so people me not see no update at that you know you see me i say but as soon as there's an update i'm gonna share it with you guys so remember if you like up this video people please and thanks like up the video 
here where you do you know if you can't see the like button click on one x it's going to be on your right hand side if you're on a phone click on the x then you're going to see the option for like the video subscribe to the channel so anything new is on the channel but you want people you're happy click the top bell icon to get notified when anything new is on the channel so we are going to move along people See, body believed to be of abducted bartender found in Clarendon. The partially nude body of a woman believed to have been abducted was found in an open lot at gravel ground in Clarendon on Friday afternoon. Police said the body is believed to be that of 22-year-old Yashika Sagri, otherwise called Yash R. Shati, a bartender from Site District in Trelawney. Sagri, police said, was allegedly abducted on Wednesday, October 4, 2023 at Kofel District in Clarendon. Information reaching our news team is that around 3 p.m. residents reportedly stumbled upon the partially decomposed Zin bad day and summoned the police. On arrival, lawmen saw the partially nude and partially decomposed bad day. The body was about 4 feet 2 inches long of Indian descent and clad in black shorts and yellow underwear which were pulled down her legs. So no know what happened people. Jano. The body was found lying face down in an open lot with what appears to be G-U-N-S-H-O-T wounds to the leg and scratches to its upper section. The scene was processed and the body removed. So no know what go on this so people. From them see scratch and them see under a re, 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 pull down and them something there. Me check some man stop do them something there, Virgin. Me check some man stop do them something there. Look how much woman the road. If you go Olaba, if you go back road, you know what I mean? All five bills get you fixed up, Bridging. Work a money and go fix up yourself. Don't take it if it's not given to you. You see me I say, you know what star me check see a long time sitting them there. Man not do them a thing, Bridging. I mean no say people in the area must have an idea who you know. So no shoot them out to the police, man. Look how far this girl ya come from. We are Trelawney. And she are walking in a bar. We are Clarendon. And our people them go here say, boy, this happened to her. John was star. And let me say this to the females then. Because I'm not going to make it be a one-sided thing. This wrong. No man shouldn't do this to no woman. You see me I say? And to all of the females them, you know sometimes, no found no, or no can man take them things and no give them nothing. After on a promise them things, don't do that. You see me, I say, if you are bigger man of money, bigger man of money, but don't promise him this and that, and you know, say, so you not go give him. You see me, I say, because someone now go just take it like that. So, RIP to this girl, yeah, you know what I mean, and condolences to her family. I'm hope say, the police, them all up on whoever do this. So, we are going to move in our next thing, you know, people. In the comprobing three police fatal shootings. The Independent Commissioner of Investigation, Indicom, says it's investigating three separate incidents of fatal police S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G, all on October 5. Indicom says three men were K-I-L-L in the incidents. They have been identified as 27-year-old Ricardo Pinnock, 24-year-old Courtney Thompson, and 39-year-old Ingus Eamon. The K-I-L-L-I-N-G-S reportedly occurred in the communities of Burnside Valley, Red Hills in St. Andrew, and Grateful Hill District and Old Arbor Road, both in St. Catherine. Indicom says three firearms were recovered, one from each scene, of which one was a licensed firearm which belonged to one of the deceased men. They are appealing to anyone with information on the three fatal canning incident to contact the commission. The original makers of video footage of the incidents are especially encouraged to contact the commission to assist with the investigative inquiries. Indicom says its investigations involve the processing of all incidents seen, processing of the firearms of all involved members of the constabulary and the three recovered firearms. The bodies of the deceased were all photographed and their unswab for GUNSHOT residue, according to Indicom, as at October 5, 
114 people have been KILL by security forces this year. So people, leave your comment. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. And one of the con in them go on people, the one with the license firearm holder, me I say more than one year more about that because the way them say it happened, me I say boy it looks suspicious. And guys, leave a like on this video. If you don't see the option for like the video, click on the X, that go up on your right hand side. Click on the X and you go get the option. And you want people, subscribe to the channel if you're not a subscriber as yet. And make sure you click that top bell icon. So we are going to move on, my people. Man K-I-L-L, 11-year-old son injured in Manchester G-U-N attack. An 11-year-old boy has been hospitalized in critical condition and his father, S-H-O-T, and dropped out after they were attacked by G-U-N men in Inglewood, Mile Gully, on Friday night. Police named the deceased as Mr. Evans, a resident of Inglewood. Preliminary reports are that about 7.30 p.m. Evans and his son were at home when G.U.N. men attacked them and opened fire, hitting the duo. They were taken to hospital where the son was admitted and the father pronounced, you know what. Police theorized that the father was the target of the attack in a feud stemming from another parish. Statistics from the police show up that... September 30, Manchester has recorded 28 MURDERS since the start of the year when compared to 43 for the corresponding period last year. So people, me not like them thing ya. If you are a person in a vibes, catch that person there. You see me I say, don't involve other people. Me not like that. You see me I say, so speedy recovery to this youth ya. I hope same survive because them same in a critical condition. I don't know where the father involved in her, you know what I mean? But them say it's a feud. So I guess when any more information release, I'm going to keep you guys updated. So subscribe to the channel, people. If you're not already a subscriber, make sure you click the top bell icon so you can get notified when there's anything new on the channel, right? And here you want people more you like this video for me. Please and thanks. Click the like button. If you're on a phone and you don't see the option for click the like button, just click power X where you see the over on your right hand side and you're going to get the option. So we are going to move along you now, people. Two students among four injured in S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G at JDF Kingston Checkpoint. A man was K-I-L-L. -L. At least four other persons, including two female students injured during a S-H-O-O-T-I-N-G involving members of the security force in the vicinity of an army checkpoint in downtown Kingston last night. The incident happened along Oxford and Beeston Street at approximately 11 p.m. The Independent Commission of Investigation, Indicom, says it has launched an investigation. Indicom, which is the state oversight body of the security force, said members of the J. DF and the Jamaica Constabulary Force JCF confirmed that they fired SHOTS in response to being SHOT at by men traveling on motorcycles according to a statement issued Saturday. In the come named the deceased as 23-year-old Marvin Cummins. It says two of the injured persons are female students under the age of a 10 years old. Their condition is not known. Indicom says its inquiries will seek to identify and clarify the circumstances of the incident. The incident scene, which was processed by Indicom and the JCF scene of crime, is extensive as it includes both a marked JCF service vehicle and pursuit as well as an alleged exchange of GU and FIRE at the checkpoint, the agency said. Over 50 spent casing were recovered. No firearms have been reported as recovered during the SHOOTING. So, people, make sure you subscribe so you get an update on this. Come on, and know more about this. What could have cost over 50 can for beat? You see me? And a school as two school as get injured. See, them say two female in it too. So, more and know more upon this. So, make sure you subscribe and make sure you say. Well, click the like button for me please and thanks.